for U11 parents information evening uh, via MS Teams Live. This is the first time we've attempted to run an event like this uh, in this format, so please do bear with us if there are any sort of technical difficulties. The, the plan for this afternoon really is for me to welcome you here and then pass over to Mrs. Dorot, who's a assistant head teacher and the raising standards leader for year 11. And she'll go through with you uh, really the plans and the expectations for year 11 as they head towards them all important GCSEs. We have enabled the Q&A function, so if you've got any questions that you would like to ask, please do type them in there. And we'll take pauses throughout this session to allow you to be able to answer, to ask them questions and for us to provide the answers uh, if they're not already part of the presentation. Uh, for my part as the head teacher, it's been a fantastic start for the year 11. They are a really special year group and having you know, been involved working with teaching them science in year seven and watching them grow throughout their time here at Kersholton High School for Girls, we're absolutely delighted with the start that they've made. Now we know there are still uh, anxieties and there are still concerns around the examinations and the format and the style and the shape of them for, for June 2022. But I want to reassure you at home, both the parents, carers and students, that we have a number of plans in place ready to go. Uh, we will not let this year group down. They're far too important and special to us for us to allow that to happen. You know, we do talk here about Team CHSG, but we do prioritise our Year 11 and Year 13s, and we won't let these students down. So I'm going to pass over, I'm going to attempt to pass over to Mrs. Durrett, who will take you through a presentation. That's you now, Mrs. Durrett. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm Mrs. Durrett. As Mrs. Devaney said, I'm in charge of, sort of the raising standards for year 11 and to really focus and drill down on the achievement of the students to make sure that they're always performing at their absolute optimum. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now with you and hopefully Mr. Devaney can just confirm that that's sharing. Is that right? Is that sharing now with everyone? That's you now, Mrs. Dorrit. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so as I said, I'm just going to take you through a number of different um, areas. First of all, I'm going to introduce the team. So obviously myself, Raising Standards Leader, and I've worked with Year 11 for the past two, three years now. Um, and we, we have a really successful model in Year 11 and our students do achieve and we're really, really proud of them. Obviously, Mr. Devaney will help oversee all of what we do and, and, and helps provide the absolute, you know, everything for year 11 all the stops get pulled out we have miss marshall our head of year 11 and our assistant head of year 11 um miss aishola and then we also have a pastoral support officer and and the three of them work collectively to ensure that the students are on time for everything are, are equipped or are, are engaged in their learning so now you've met the team I'm just going to introduce you to a quick resource and then i'll, I'll outline the sort of the main focus of our, our talk this evening so one thing that will happen as a, re a result of tonight is that we will record this session and we will then place a recording on our SharePoint site. Now, this is a year 11 site that all year 11 students can access. You will also be able to access it, but only through your daughter. And I would recommend that you do sit together and have a look through this. This is our main area of our sort of contact in terms of providing resources for, for the students. It worked tremendously well last year and, and it, it was a lovely way for me to share videos, resources for students to actually pop back in and have a look at stuff um, that they saw in assemblies and everything is all loaded up there so they get to revisit. So as I say, from tomorrow, this will go live and tonight, the recording from tonight will also be on there so you can revisit any information as you wish. Um, as I say, as you can see from the, the, the bottom that says resources, you know, we've got a range of things on there from exam stress and well-being, our goals, our information about our mock exams, as well as different subjects and um, revision materials. So it's a real one-stop one shop for everything that the students will need to help them be successful. So this evening's sort of key messages are that I'm going to talk you through our roadmap and um, I'll talk you through that in a second. So I'll show you the journey that your 11s are on. It's quite a comprehensive roadmap. There's a lot in there and as I see, you, 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 I'll talk you through that. 
Um, I'm then going to look at um, our intervention sessions. I've obviously sent out previous correspondence about that, but I'll go into more detail about how that looks. I'm going to talk to you about our PSHE and our careers days, our mock exams. I'm going to talk about how to revise because I think if you're, if it's important that you know how they revise, we're doing a lot of work here with students. But if you're sort of singing from, singing from the hymn, same hymn sheet as well at, at home, then that really, really is helpful and it will work, ensure that students are working at their optimum. I'm also going to provide you some information of how you can help because we need you essentially. We can pull out all the stops here for the students. They can put, give it their all, but we need your intervention as well at home. And I guess my key message is that the students need to maintain focus right until the end of the exam period. OK, so let's start with the roadmap. So, as I say, this will all be available. It's already uploaded on the SharePoint and you'll be able to access this from tomorrow. The students have this as well. So the start of year 11, obviously here we are and the first, the first stop is our appearance information evening. We then work through, um, in this roadmap, we have two exam stress workshops. It is a stressful year for year 11s. Um, and, you know, they, they, will, they will laugh, they will cry, they will, they will rejoice. There'll be, there'll be tears of, of sadness because they haven't achieved in certain areas. So we help them through that. So we've got an exam stress workshop in, in October. The students can sign up. We very much put the onus on the students to come along to these things. We also have one later on in the year um, in January, a second one. We have, um, actually, sorry, it says October, there, but it's January, 19th January. Um, we obviously have got our mock exams coming up and that will still be from the 10th of, um, sorry, from the 8th to the 10th of November. The students will be well prepared for these and their maths, English and science lessons. We go through a series of, of preparation for them so they know what to expect, um, but they are coming up and they're massively important. These help us decide what tiers the students will be entered into. These give us our sort of predicted grades. Well, it's more like they're most likely to achieve grades, and that lets us provide further intervention where possible. So as I said, we want the students to achieve their absolute optimum. We've got our sixth form open evening coming up on the 10th of November, and this is an opportunity for students to really understand sort of where they're going next and have an insight into what our sixth form looks like. So I do hope that you'll all attend that and, and it, it really opens, it, it really gives, it's really insightful to see where, where their GCSEs can take them. And in some ways it's really helpful to actually attend these evenings because then they, they apply a lot more uh, meaning to why they are studying and revising because suddenly they want to go off and study certain A-levels. A number of different careers um, days. We've got um, a careers day in November. We've got a later one in February, um, as well as we'll do one to one careers interviews. And there's a number of different career talks from different subject areas that students will be offered. And again, this helps apply a little bit more meaning to why they are revising and why they are studying. That said, it's not all about studying and revising. Yes, the exams are the final outcome and we, we want success. But we also include a lot of personal development, a lot of um, you know understanding about how to to cope in life in, in, thereafter um, their school days. So we have a personal development day one. I think we have three throughout the year for the students, um, and it's a really really useful day. Everything from you know the, the relationships guidance, um, you know career support to um, the emotional support to health etc. We have a further set of mocks. Um, I will update this. I seem to have doubled up. Oh, we don't want to do two sets of mocks in November. Apologies, I'll update that. We have further sets of mocks in, in February. Now, one of the things that we like to do in year 11 is to incentivize our students. Yes, the incentive at the end is the great career, you know, the great results at the end. But we like to give them a nudge all the way through. So we run something called our pink T-shirts. Um, interventions. Now they have four different opportunities to wear, to win, to, to, to gain a pink t-shirt, a pink polo shirt. We've got one for every single member of the year 11. They can all achieve, um, they can all achieve the goal of, achieve, of having a pink polo shirt and it's a nice polo shirt with our logo on it. They can wear instead of their, um, their normal school shirt. It's quite nice, it stands them out um, as being high achievers, as having worked hard and putting in a lot of effort. 
The first one we do based on the mocks, so it is very much about their effort and their attainment. The second one is based on purely on their efforts, and we run effort slips. We, we, I'll show you an example later on. We put effort slips out where um, we ask all teachers to just write a name on, on a slip of a student that's doing particularly well, putting in that, going that extra mile, attending all their sessions, doing the extra homework, really improving their effort. Then they're awarded a pink t-shirt there. Another one is in March, another opportunity, and that's based on the second set of mocks that happen in February. Um, and again, that's based on their academic performance there. So we will base it on how their, their, their minimum target grades and, and how they have achieved. And then the final one in April, final opportunity for them to win that T-shirt is based on effort again. So it really is available to every single one of them. Not everyone gets one every year because some people still don't put the effort in, which would be a real shame. But as I say, we have one for them all and they, it is achievable for every single person. As we go through, so we've got a number of um, further exam stress workshops um, and careers days and we've got the National Apprenticeship, Apprenticeship Show um, with the students. So we're really helping guide the students through, yes, academic success at the end, but also into those next steps. Um, we will have a further uh, parents consultation um, in March, as well as we'll have uh, an exam preparation evening for, for parents as well to come in and help learn with their daughter, help understand the learning process. And it's a nice way for us to help share some of the techniques that we use in school and then you can apply them at home as well. By round about May, all students will switch to the exam timetable. And this is usually at the commencement of the public examinations. So they will then, they will come in to their, they will only come in for their exams usually. A lot of students still come in for various lessons as well, and teachers are always happy to help the students right up until till that exam. In June, we'll have a nice big leavers set or celebration to just celebrate that achievement. And it will be very much focused on achievement and we'll run our rewards ceremony then and really just applaud the girls for all their efforts and hard work. And we every year we see the students make massive improvements. Year 11, they just they just get it now and they usually just knuckle down. Um, we have some further six form open mornings where the students get to come in and see live lessons. Um, and then obviously once they've signed up to the six form, they get to come in for induction days. And then we'll all meet again in um, August for our exam results day where we will celebrate that success. As I say, an up to date version will be on the SharePoint from tomorrow for you all. So a couple of other things I'm going to talk you through are our after school exam sessions, after school intervention sessions. So we sent this timetable out previously and so far the students have um, have started very, very well. And I've got to commend them. They've been going along to the sessions, they've been taking part and they've been really focused. I've been wandering in and out and it's, it's been fantastic. I had a full, um, almost a full suite of people at my session today. Um, the students are getting to grips with the timetable. There are a number of different sessions. Essentially how it runs, it's invites um, for a number of students. So some students, the teachers want to be there and they have made it mandatory. That said, there are opportunities for students to go along if they want to. They just have to be with that teacher to check that there is space available, but on the whole, that's absolutely fine. Some teachers and heads of departments have made it the, the, whole, the whole department it mandatory for everyone to come along but it is on a per student basis. So your daughter should know which one she should be coming along to. So we run these on a Monday, Tuesday and Thursday um, for the option subjects. And then on Fridays, we have English and maths. Obviously English and maths also have some extra intervention sessions on the morning where they have the period zero now. That is working really well. At the start, the students were sort of strolling in and just sort of not taking it entirely seriously for the first couple of days. I think they were still maybe in year 10 mode, but they are on time. They are running into these sessions because they want to get there before it starts now. And I'm, I applaud them. It's really, really good to see how useful they're finding it and how well they're receiving it. So, so please do commend your daughter for that. It's wonderful. On a Wednesday, we have private or sorry, independent sort of private study time. We've opened up all the IT rooms for students and the onus is on them to, to use that time to spend uh, 45 minutes after school, 
going up, doing some, getting some coursework done, getting some, some cue cards done, doing some exam practice, doing some revision. And teachers are always on hand to help where possible. So I do urge your daughter to use those sessions where possible. OK, right. As I said, we've got some further interventions that we, we offer. We, we have our pink, our effort slips, our pink T-shirt um, interventions, our motivational programme. We run the, we're part of the National Tutoring Programme and at some point your daughter may have had tutoring in year 10 um, and, and there may be further tutoring um, available for a, a large number of, of students in year 11. We've already um, singled out about probably about 25 to 30 students who we think could just do with that extra push and we've signed um, up to my tutor again this year. It works tremendously well for that one-to-one -one tutoring just to give students the absolute edge and to make sure that they're achieving their minimum. We want them to be successful as possible. So we'll be setting that up in the coming weeks. After half term, they should start and it's a 10 week programme. Last year and the previous year when we've run these, they've been very successful and the pass rate has been really, really high. We do attribute it to the students going along and having that extra tuition. We don't ask for any money from you. We will pay for all of that. So we do what we do ask from you is that you encourage your daughter to go along. You don't let them miss it or forget it. We will make sure we spend, send correspondence home so you know exactly when these sessions will happen, but they will happen on a Wednesday. We have also signed up to something called the Access Project. Um, it is really wonderful to be a part of. It's to ensure that we can get our most high aspiring, high achieving students to aspire to the top universities. We want our students going to, to the, the top third, you know, our Oxfords, Cambridge, or UCLs. And so obviously your daughter might be in the process of applying. I think the deadline is tomorrow morning and interviews will be starting next week. And um, we only have 10 spaces, so it, it is tight, but it's a lovely opportunity for the students to get further tutoring and for the students to get mentoring and to just help them through with their choices about universities and their, their A-level um, choices and then with their UCAS applications and, and beyond. And the one good thing about this is if they can get onto this programme in year 11, it stays with them till they leave at the end of year 13 and they have that mentor, that one-to-one -one tuition and all they're in their subjects. So it's, it's fantastic. Lots of trips and aspiring programmes and, and, and sessions are involved there and available. One thing we're going to be rolling out in the next couple of weeks are revision guides. Now, we're not going to ask you to buy the revision guides for your daughter. We are going to furnish the students with all the revision guides possible. We're going to give them every opportunity. Quite possibly, they have been the most disadvantaged by our COVID situation, um, but we're not going to let that hold us back and we will get the students back up to speed and achieving as they should um, very, very quickly. So we'll make sure we give every student a revision guide and we'll be actively using them in lessons and for homework. So again, there's a role for you to play into to ask them about what what work they should, they should have, they should be doing. If they ever say to you, I don't have any homework tonight, nonsense. They have always got homework. They've always got some cue cards to write. They've always got some revision um, practice that they can use. They can do using their revision guides. So let's say further interventions that we, we will host, um, we will offer. One thing we, with our, along with our mock exams and our mock exam timetable is being sent out tomorrow morning to you all and it will be published to all the students, is we do also require students to work in the holidays. It, we tell them, you know, you give up a little bit of your time now to have the most amazing future. So we will be setting things like holiday pass papers and we will ask you to support us in, in following through and making sure that they do that. And as you see, when they finish their pass papers and they feel that they finished their holiday work, they'll have the revision guides to be working on. So I will appreciate it's quite fast, but I want to carry on. So I want to talk to you about how we should be revising with the students. And I thought it may be a good way to start by sharing this concept of how we learn. Now, very much in the last few years, our, our teachers have been trained to understand how the working and long term memory work. So we start off with our, our environment, it's our sensory input, information that we're faced with every day. And your daughter is faced with, with countless different sensory information all the time, and it requires a lot of attention five different periods a day and an after school intervention form time. That's a lot. And it's a lot of information to hold at one time in your working memory. 
we can hold around about five different things at the one time in our working memory before it, it goes. It's quite transient. Information can sort of come and go quite easily. So one thing we do here is that we constantly recall information because the more we recall the information and we retrieve the, the information that's sitting in that working memory, the more it likely it is to transfer to that long term memory and then it sticks. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this all this information that they need to know for their exams stick. So when they turn up to their exams, it's there. They can easily retrieve it. So that's what we're working on with our students. And that's where you can come in in terms of helping test your, test your daughter, use cue cards, quiz them, ask them to tell you about their day. Tell them three things that you learned today in maths, and that will force them to start retrieving information. Ask them to tell you three keywords that they learned in one of their subjects today. Do that all the time and this information becomes very much stuck. With that in mind, we need to plan revision around how uh, around this idea of retrieval. When students study the night before an exam, it's a waste of time. If they go up to their bedroom and they study for four hours, well, that really is a waste of time because actually after the first hour, hour and a half, the information is too much, too much cognitive overload. And that information then thereafter is just going in and out as quickly, uh, going out as quickly as it came in. So we try and chunk the information down and break it down for students. And we ask students to do short, sharp sessions where they'll maybe spend you know, 25 minutes learning keywords using flashcards and then stop. And then maybe stop and do some maths exam practice for a further 25 minutes and then stop and do something else, a treat, a reward, a walk, a piece of chocolate, whatever, and then come back and maybe do another 25 minutes and do something different, maybe some English poems, some coursework, and then stop and then come back again and do something else. And actually doing that four or five times and then being done in terms of revision for one session is much more beneficial than just sitting for, for an hour and a half, two hours straight, because you will stop taking that information in. Those of studies have shown that actually as the last sort of 22 to 23 minutes of any kind of any revision or any kind of learning process, we're less focused and we stop learning that information as well. So grabbing those that start, so making more of those starts is what is key. So as I say, help your daughter try to chunk in that information and space out that learning. So what we do here is we're running a number of um, our PDP program, we're running a number of sessions on revision. We're really focusing on it. We want the students to increase their productivity. As they say, studying all night, doing an all nighter. Perhaps that's how you revise in the past. It used to be how I thought it was effective. Highlighting loads of things I thought was effective. It's not. Rereading my information is not actually as effective. So we're working with the students to teach them how to increase that productivity and their concentration. Now, going back to that image of only being able to take in so much information at once and having lots of different sensory information that we have to focus on. We have to get rid of some of the stuff that's not relevant. So things like turning music off, um, turning music off, turning the TV off, putting the phone away, locking it away in a drawer for an hour is much more um, useful to increase that productivity for the students. And that's where again, we'll ask you to help when students have their phone on the desk, constantly moving their head to have a look and see if they've got a text or anything else that's come through on Snapchat or Insta or other platforms that students like, constantly stops their attention and it actually reduces their productivity. So turning music off, phones away will really have a massive impact. And if you can create a quiet space for, for your daughter to revise, that's much more use, that's much help, much more helpful as well. Thank you. Self-quizzing is really useful. Students are being taught at the moment how to self-quiz and in lessons, um, we're being, they're being shown the process. 
So we're showing how to use cue cards are massively useful. Um, you know, testing, they can, you can test them with them. You can say, give me, your, give me your set of cue cards that you've been working on. They will start to build up a big number of flashcard packs over the coming months. If you could test them with them, ask them, so if I flashcards tonight, you know, where they get to practice with them, because essentially practicing helps you retrieve information, which helps it move to that long term memory. As much as I've said, move phones away. I am very much a old school, use paper and pen, use flashcards, don't use your phone. There is a, a free app called Anki. Um, you can download it for free. You can upgrade, I think, for four ninety nine. dollars um, I downloaded this and, and gave it a go, and it is useful. You can basically create a, an online sort of pack of flashcards um, in this app, and it works your way through. It constantly quizzes you and tests you. It gives you how quick you, you're able to retrieve the information, and it tells you the ones that you struggled with. And it's a, it's a really, really useful app. And sometimes we tell the students to download it, and you know, if you're standing at the bus stop, use the Anki app. So it might be something to have a look at. Another useful way to revise to sort of maximise that success is to read and recite. And this is where we ask the students to talk out loud. So you read a page of information, you might read a page of keywords or you might read a, a topic of sociology or, or, or physics. And then you close that book or you close that page and then you recite it out loud. It has to be done out loud. Now they could do that to, to a member of the family a dog, a cat, or like I used to do, sit in my bedroom and talk to a poster. Sounds odd, but it is really, really useful and it works. It really works. The students are also being taught to use the face or the face it um, technique this year. And that is where they learn the facts or they relearn the facts to get them all back into their, their head, back into that working memory, so to recall. They get to then apply um, apply these these facts to to something. OK, they get to then connect it to something else, another area of the course, which is where we get our maximum or marks from, and then they get to apply it to an exam question. So ask your daughter about this. What is the face it? Get them to explain it to you, because again, teaching is one of the best ways to learn something. So get them to teach you something. And then another thing to be aware of is the Pomodoro technique. Again, I'll be going through a lot of this with the students. Um, it's this idea of this short, sharp, you know, revision, but doing it with a timer. Again, not using a phone timer, but doing it with like an egg timer or like the tomato, Pomodoro um, tomato um, timer. Doing memory clocks where you have like the timed um, revision. A lot of departments will use that in lessons. So again, if a, a student's a daughter, your daughter says, I don't know how to revise tonight, say go into a memory clock, the students will start to know what these are. And then of course, spacing out, just doing a little bit of everything over time is actually a little bit hard at the time. It's tricky and learning is tricky and actually revision and learning should be tricky if you want the maximum outcome. So doing a little bit of everything is actually better than sitting for hours doing one thing. How can you help? And this is where this is, this is where we need you. We need you as much as the students can give their everything and we can give our everything as we will. We need you too. We we recently did research in the last few years and realised that tier two words are words that students find in academic contexts. So they'll find them in exam questions. They'll find them in, in items that are in, in exam papers. And this is what we want to develop with our students. So tier work one words are words that are used all the time, everyday language. The tier three words are the words we teach them and we'll get to write um we get them to write in their you know their flashcards for. But the tier two words are high frequency words such as you know um evaluate um decipher um deliberate and this is where you could start to um, speak to your daughter about you know, these tier two words. Look at the you know, sort of command words in an exam, um, in exam questions. I'll upload a, a big list of tier two words onto our SharePoint site. And if you could work with your daughter to just go through these, that would be massively helpful because we've had, we sometimes have students come out going, oh, I just didn't know what decipher meant, so I couldn't answer the question. And once we tell them what it meant, they knew what the answer was have been, and it's a real shame to miss out because of because of a language issue. 
Um, this was part of our wider programme of our tutor reads where we have teachers read to students and we were picking out tier two words. So as I say, the school involvement is actually, you know, as huge as it is, the parental involvement is almost more so. Which brings us to our top, our sort of last section, to be pleased to know, is our top 10 tips to support your child through their exams. So essentially, I have my 10 I wanted to share with you. I often get asked in, in parents' evenings, how can I help my daughter? What can I do? Well, here are a number of things that you can do. Because every day you can support your child to make choices that can impact how they perform during that exam. But not just that, but impact their whole year 11 to make it a successful, enjoyable time for the students. So the first one is be a role model. I need you to set a good example by modelling the behaviour you want your child to adopt. You know, planning for the week, eating healthily, keeping hydrated, um, getting enough sleep and exercise, staying calm and, and being organised because they will mirror and bounce off of, of you. So, so be that role model. Set them up in the morning by wishing them well for the day and, you know, and starting off fresh. It, will, it has a profound impact on the students entering our school when they've had a good start to the morning. Second one is to help them set goals. So that encourage that goal setting by, by talking to your daughter about her goals, what she wants to achieve, how she can do it. Give positive reinforcement and, and connect with her about why and what she wants to achieve. And again, add that meaning to why she's doing all the studying and revising, why she's giving up going out with her friends you know, this weekend to get that extra work done. The goals can, you know, dreams can become goals as long as you put it into action. My third one is to keep them active. Encourage exercise. Go for a walk or cycle together, uh, maybe just to get some fresh air. We do have some students that will run themselves into the ground by studying from the minute they get home, you know, to the minute they go to bed. We need you to sort of break that a little bit. Yes, we want everything. We want their studying, they want their revision, but they need to be looking after themselves as well. So, so getting outside and being active together, doing some online yoga together. Um, I discovered something called um, what is it? Be Boho Beautiful Yoga is very, very good. And there's a number of different um, sort of relaxation yoga um, platforms that I will send an update of the SharePoint with. So maybe do it together. Um, number four is to eat healthily. Plan family meals together and ensure there are lots of healthy snacks around. Um, and hydration really is key to brain function. So make sure your daughter drinks plenty of water. None of these, um, no energy drinks, no, they're not actually helpful, they're counterproductive because they keep the students awake and then it has a massive negative impact on them the next day. Um, but do make sure they are eating and having, stopping for those, you know, meal breaks. Have some time out, take some time out to encourage your daughter to build in opportunities to have some time out each week, you know, away from study, you know, go out for some food, see, see some friends, have a bath. Um, read a book for just for pleasure because a lot of their reading will be academic this year but reading for pleasure is really vital as well. Control sleep patterns. Sometimes we'll see students half awake in the morning and then they'll say to us oh I didn't get to sleep till about three in the morning and I said what were you doing? It's on my phone. This is where you need to step in and help us because you need to make sure she's not going to bed too late. Students aged 16 to 19 actually need between eight and nine hours sleep to have that per night, to have that optimum performance. We actually as adults need eight hours sleep as well um, to have that optimum performance and controlling that sleeping pattern has a massive impact. There are ways to turn off the internet, uh, so, you know, on certain devices. Yes, it seems cruel, but sometimes we have to be cruel to be kind. So maybe shutting it down at 10 o'clock maybe asking, you know, taking phones away at 10 o'clock and saying, read a book and go to bed, go to sleep. So, so that leads into my, you know, unplugging. Unplug for techno from technology at least 30 minutes to an hour before going to bed. And um, when revising, ensure your daughter puts her phone away, say in a drawer, just resist that temptation. Again, we have to sort of, we have to be hard and strict on this. We have to take away anything that's going to take away that concentration from the students. 
Staying cool and calm, you know, set a good example by staying calm yourself. If you get really nervous about their exams and their, their mock exams, they will just feed off that nervous energy and it has that, it'll have a negative impact on, 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 on them. So stay cool and calm yourself. Um, you know, stress can actually be helpful in a good way because it, it gets our adrenaline pumping and that's actually a really good thing. Um, sometimes our adrenaline pumping is, is a good thing in terms of the way we can focus on and, and carry on focus attention and get our brain working but too much stress goes the other way and then we actually impedes our performance completely number nine is belief um, i always boost your daughter's confidence every single day and celebrate any successes we do here and wait to celebrate them at home perhaps reward her with many goals achieved throughout the year such as you know completing a piece of coursework big celebration wonderful um you know getting the pink t-shirt big celebration um having a whole half term without detention because she turned up on time for everything big celebration show her how proud you are of her and um, we tell them how proud we are of them every single day Please do the same. I'm sure you are already, of course. And then finally, be supportive. Be that good listener. Um, be approachable um, and help her deal with her emotions because their emotions will be will be high, they'll be low, they'll be everywhere this year. Um, and just be there for her. We will obviously be at the end of the phone, at the end of the email for you and be supportive in every way that we can. Um, so please do use us as much as you know the students will and please do get in touch where we can help you and um, but thank you thank you in advance for everything that you would do for your daughter and as i say this won't be the last time you hear from me i'll be in regular contact with you i'm going to end my presentation there um i'm pleased to know and i'm going to pass back to mr Deveni. thank you Thank you, Mrs. Durrett, and um, thanks very much for your presentation also. Um, I'm delighted to say we've had over 140 attendees at this tonight, which is fantastic. And we do have a few questions um, that I'll answer now before we take it sort of before we, we close this event. The first one is where can we access past papers? Um, the best place to access past papers at home is on the exam board's website. And for or um, the the Mock examinations in November are in English, Maths and Science only. And for English, we do AQA specification. In Maths, we do Edexcel. And in Science, uh, whether there's combined or triple science, we also do AQA. So if you go onto the websites there, you will be able to access uh, past papers. If there are any past papers that are relevant to the examinations uh, in November, teachers will be supplying you with uh, the content necessary for that uh, in, in advance. We've had a question around uh, the results last year uh, or GCSE results. Uh, I'm delighted to tell you that our results last year were absolutely fantastic. We had eight, just under 85% of grades were a four plus, so a, a good pass. Um, overall, that gave us what they call an alt two. Um, and ALPS 2 put us in the top 25% of schools in the country. So the results here are very, very good. Um, and I have to say the A-level results took one better step. They went to ALPS 1, which put them in the top 10% of results in the country. So, you know, we hope to see a lot of our year 11s in the sixth form getting them results too in, in the future. And one of the last questions was around the three-year key stage three. Um, we take a lot of confidence in the fact that we do have a three-year key stage three in comparison to some schools that have a two-year key stage three so we've had a longer run at it um, than, than most schools in terms of getting prepared for these examinations uh, next year so we are in a good position we're in a strong position because we do have that three-year key stage three and it will be of benefit to the students we're awaiting the final guidance from the examination boards uh, around what the exact content is. You may have seen in the news today that there was a, a, a slight snippet around some subjects um, getting elements of choice and other, and other subjects not getting an element of choice. But we have to wait on that guidance. Um, we have contingency plans ready to go across all subjects and heads of department are geared up and their strategies in place for whatever uh, is thrown at us. I'm led to believe it might not even be February before we get the finalised guidance entirely. Um, but I can reassure you the fact that we've got a three-year key stage 
three here. Plus, you'll know obviously we do a lot of work through our workbooks and booklets. They're going to be a fantastic resource for the guilds as we go forward um, with all the, the content of the syllabus and the course there in them booklets. Um, and, and the girls have them to hand and the feedback's been incredibly positive about the, the, the work and effort that's gone into that to make sure that we've got fantastic resources for the girls. And just a few other points that I wanted to raise. Um, we are going to create in the next few weeks a SharePoint for all subjects. So I'm prioritizing year 11 and year 13. So we've got digital resources creator who will be creating spaces for that the girls can access uh, past papers, materials such as uh, lesson, uh, uh, PowerPoints, uh, booklets, resources, anything that they can access from home that's going to help support them uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I'll write to you near the time when, when that's all in place. Uh, we are, as Mrs. Doris said, we're investing a lot of money into tutoring, the National Tutoring Program, and we're trying to get as many students involved in that as, as we possibly can. But I, I really cannot stress the importance of, of us working collectively together uh, over the next 10 months. It's really important that you take on board the advice that Mrs. Durrett has given you there around revision techniques, around engaging with your daughter, asking questions how the, how the, day, uh, the day went. One of the biggest strategies we always talk about is if they can teach it to you, then they've learned it. Um, and, it's, and, it, and that's worked time and time again. And where we get that, the girls that are most successful here are the girls where we get that buy-in from home, uh, we get that drive and ambition from home, coupled with what the same drive and ambition that we have for the girls here in the school day in day, uh, and, and day out. Um, you will always say, as Mrs. Dirt said, we will be welcoming you back after half term also for our sixth form open evening, where we'll have our A-levels and B-techs on display and we want to see as many of our year 11s staying with us into the sixth form. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic environment in our sixth form. We always sort of, I know some schools like to have massive sixth forms, that's not the case for me personally. I prefer to have one where we know the girls as individuals, uh, we know their strengths, we know their areas for development and we really put the focus on them and, and their achievement. As I say, I hope this uh, information even has given you a clear steer of where we're going uh, as a school uh, towards these GCSEs. I hope it all gives you, gives you information about the next steps that we need to take as we head towards the GCSEs also. Um, if there are any sort of burning questions that you have, please don't hesitate to contact your, your, teach, your daughter's teacher, the head of department or your daughter's head of year. Um, it's, it's, we want you to ask them questions now. We don't want it to be, to be asked when it's too late. So please do get in contact with us if you've got any sort of burning questions. As I say, we've had a fantastic response to this event tonight. We've got a lot of attendees here. Um, so I hope that you have got everything that you wanted from it. I'm going to say goodbye to you and on behalf of Ms. Durrett and Ms. Ashore and Ms. Marshall who are sitting in the wings in case there's any questions. It's goodbye from them as well too, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks now. Goodbye.